welcome to a new vlog. Welcome to Monday. I am... <laughs> it's already noon. Almost completely forgot to start this vlog. I've just been working. I'm in office hours at the moment on Zoom. I had one student actually show up, which was nice. And yeah, I've just been doing a ton of grading. But I think I'm mostly caught up. It wasn't a, you know, a whole bunch of one assignment. It was a lot of little things that had been either turned in late or turned in early. So some things I have caught up on because the student finally submitted them. Other things I'm getting ahead on because students have turned them in early, which is always nice. It is the second to last week. Next week is the last official week of classes. Finals week is the week after that, the week of the 26th, but I don't give a final exam and so I don't use my final exam period. So that gives me finals week to grade, although at the rate some students are going with turning in things early, yeah, I I might I might be done grading early, which would be lovely because as soon as I'm done grading, I'm done. <laughs> That's the rule. That's it. Once I once everything's graded and I've posted my grades, there's literally nothing else for me to do. So I guess that's the the bonus of having a contract that's 100% teaching. Um, there are downsides of that, but that's not one of them. I know there will be at least a few students who I've set April 23rd as the absolute last day that I can accept work. I did that because technically it'd be the week after would be when I can accept work. So if I have a student who emails me panicking on the 22nd or 23rd, I can say, look, take the weekend, get it to me by like the 26th or the 27th, because technically that's still finals week. So my grades aren't due, I don't think, until that first Monday of May, but I don't need to tell my students that because then everyone will want an extension. And I've been really, really generous with extensions all semester, but I've been telling them all semester that as we get to the end of the semester, we're gonna run out of time that I can give extensions. So I don't wanna tell them that like the 30th, the end of finals week, because technically the finals week, the last day of finals is May 1st, which I'm uh, so sorry for every student who's taking a final on a Saturday the last Saturday of the semester. That just seems cruel and unusual. But it, the schedule says May 1st is the final day of finals week. So I, but I don't want to tell my students they have until the end of finals week because then some students will take me up on that. And then if they don't start working until the 29th, thinking they'll get it done by the 30th and then they're still not done, then we're in a lot of trouble. Whereas if I tell them the 23rd, but they still need a few days, I, I can I can work with that. So it's always a bit of kind of trying to psychologically outmaneuver my students <laughs> at the end of the semester for their own benefit so that, you know, they have time if things go a bit wrong. But we're almost done. I just, we're almost done. And that is crazy. Like I said, I think there will be at least a handful of students, like five or six, who will need some extra time. So I think there will be some assignments that I don't get until the 23rd, and I'll probably finish up grading those on like the 26th, and then post the announcement telling my students they've got 48 hours to check their grades, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, be able to post by like Wednesday the 28th. That that is what I'm hoping for. I really want everything to be done and out of my hands by the beginning of May. <laughs> by Friday, April 30th, I want to know that I am completely done with this seemingly never-ending semester. I've done as much grading as I can do at the moment, but I'm going to keep refreshing the grade books um, for my five classes throughout the day in case there's stuff that gets turned in. I've got some stuff to check in my email. Looks like I've got some drafts and looks like some extra credit stuff. Glad I left the grade book open because looks like I'll be going back in to add those extra credits. I've got my textbook order form that's due the 26th. Might not do that today, but I probably will put it on my schedule for later this week. I'm going to get back to work, but I will check with you later today when I 
start doing or after I've done, um, we'll see what time it is, my book work for the day. I've got some proofreading to do, some cover work to do if I can get to it. I still have three chapters I need to edit, but I want to try to get most of those done today. Plus I've got outlining and writing to do. And there's a cute little bunny rabbit sitting in the shade outside my window. So yeah, I'm going to get back to work. Oh, and I'm listening. Totally missed the boat. I, I thought it wasn't coming out until later in um, April, but the Taylor's version of her album, of Taylor Swift's album, Fearless, has come out. So I've been listening to her re-recording of the Fearless album all morning, just listening to it on repeat and absolutely loving it. You can let me know in the comments if you're a Taylor Swift fan as well. So yeah, listening to that album, absolutely loving it. I want to get back to that and I will check with you guys later. I could do this before the air conditioning started. I'm not waiting for it to stop. Okay, it's now 6.30. It's been a good day. It's been a very productive day. I got all my teaching work done, including some stuff that was on my list for tomorrow, so that was great. Uh, I was watching, listening, to a lecture that the university was hosting another department, the fashion program at ASU, was doing a lecture and one of the speakers is the woman who used to be curator at the Phoenix Art Museum and I worked with her and volunteered with her for a few years uh, while she worked there. And then I had to scale back on <laughs> volunteering. When I started my PhD program I got about a year in and then realized I could not be doing a PhD and be volunteering and my teaching requirements, all that was too much. But she now is a professor at ASU and so I saw her post about this lecture on her Instagram and it sounded really good and it was, it was fascinating. It was her and then an archival intern at the, the Met in New York, which Danita had worked as a curator at the Met in New York before coming out to Arizona. So yeah, their conversation, discussion, lecture was fascinating. Made me really miss doing my research. Like this summer I really want to find a way of fitting that back in. I feel like immediately following my PhD I was just so burned out and I kind of had fallen out of love with my research and I've talked about this somewhat recently in a previous vlog and so at first it was like I just want to focus on other things I just want a simple life I just want to teach and do my job and read and sleep recover from my PhD but over this past year it's kind of just been creeping up on me that like I'm not following the traditional path for someone with my degree and with my research and you know it's partly because I didn't choose a traditional path for my research like most of the people who do my research are in a program like this the other speaker today is doing a master's in costume studies I think from NYU and like those programs either when I was starting you know several years ago and looking for grad schools they either didn't exist or there were only a few 
and it just it wasn't quite the right thing like there's so much that I would probably do differently <laughs> and so much advice I would give now to someone wanting to study what I studied like I don't know that I would tell someone to do it in, in an English department like I made it work I made it work but part of me wishes that I had been able to do a costume studies or material culture degree. I don't know that I would have wanted to move to New York, but like there's a bunch of these programs in the UK and that would have been the dream. So yeah, there's just, I didn't choose the normal path for someone doing my research and then I haven't followed a traditional path since graduating. But like that doesn't mean I can't still do my research. So like I just need to get out of my own way and just figure out like how I want to do that. Like, do I want to keep posting on research and ramblings, which is my blog, or do I want to have this as part of my website? But like the blog on there has so far, like I've only got like one or two posts, but it's more writing focused. And I do want to do more blog posting as a writer, author, self-publishing author. So I want to get back into it. And I, I want to start creating more of a name for myself as a, a fashion scholar. I just feel like that part of my identity has just been like dropped off. And part of the problem right now is that it's just, it's so hard to be doing the self-publishing, writing four books, well, working on four books. I'm not actively writing four at a time, I'm, but I'm working on four at a time. So working on four books, teaching full-time and teaching five classes, and all of the work that, that entails, and then to now also try to add in, like, blogging and, like, writing a blog post once a week or at least twice a month. It's a lot, and I know it's a lot, but I, I, I don't, I don't want to pick. I don't want to sacrifice one thing. Like, I feel like the writing is something that's become so important to me. Like I'm literally staring at the last page of Independent Hearts book one because I finished the first draft of editing. So I need to get things ready to send it off to the beta readers. And like I've loved writing this book and I love writing all of my other books. And so I wouldn't want to give up on being a novelist because I love it. And I would love to get more into doing my research and being a freelance writer on the topic of my research and like having other people publish me so dreams lots and lots of dreams and I'll never be able to make them a reality if I I don't start if I don't try part of me is just really ready for the summer to be here because I just want a break but part of me also wants the summer to get here because I just have so many things I want to do and that I want to work on and I want to see if I can make them a thing and make it make it work so yeah anyway I have done my editing for the day and I have done my proofreading for the day so all that's left is outlining and writing but I am exhausted and is now 640 <laughs> so I need to get dinner going I think I'm just gonna do box mac and cheese but I need to clean out the pasta pan because it's currently soaking in my sink so I need to go do that part of me is just like I need to be forcing myself to wake up but part of me is also like there's just a few weeks left I need to survive to the end of the semester if I can sleep, I should sleep. I was supposed to have occupational therapy today and it got canceled. And I was actually kind of glad about that. <laughs> cause it meant I had time. I'm gonna go, cause you guys don't need to hear me talk about how tired I am. I just need to go get dinner, get some TV turned on, relax for a bit, probably start doing my outlining perhaps while I'm watching TV and then do the writing before I go to bed. Or I might just skip it always a possibility. I might just skip it. I am allowed to do that. This, I mean, this whole month, I've talked about this in the last vlog or the one before, this whole month it's about doing the bare minimum. Um, I will catch up next month. I will, you know, make up for any lost ground for days where I don't do anything in one or, one or more of the projects. So I'm going to do my best. 
I always feel exhausted at six and I'm like, I don't see how I can do any more book work. And then I rally a bit and get stuff done. So, um, I think I'm going to try to do at least one of the projects. Might not do both, but I'll try to do at least one or half, half of each. We'll see. I need to go get news hour turned on and get dinner going and I will show you the rest of my evening and check with you guys tomorrow. Hi. Okay. It's Tuesday. <laughs> ah, it's Tuesday. I, I feel like I've developed a mostly love, but a kind of love-hate relationship with Tuesdays. Tuesdays are so long and so exhausting, but I also get to see my students, and that's a really good thing. So yeah, it's, I just, and there's only today and then next Tuesday, and then that's it. Like, I'm looking at my <laughs> my laptop to double check the date. Yeah, it's the 13th. So just today and then next week on the 20th. And that'll be it for Zoom. And the 20th will be my last day of office hours as well. So after the 20th, no more Zoom um, until the fall. Because I'm assuming I'll still use Zoom for online office hours. I imagine we'll get more instructions about that as we get closer to the fall semester. Because a lot of it depends on the state of things. Anyway, I did not have the best evening. You didn't see any word count clips because there were none. <laughs> I didn't do any writing or any outlining. I'm, a l I'm not nervous about those word counts. I'm imagining <sighs> Across the Pond has probably gone up to around, let me see. I want to make a guess, but then I want to see if I'm right. I'm guessing Across the Pond has probably gone up to, it was 1,040 something. I'm guessing it's gone up to 1,065, we'll say. Oh, 1,060. I was close. Um, so that's gone up to 160. Royal Romance was 934. I'm betting that's gone up to we'll say 9.50. Oh, 9.35. Okay, we're still early enough in that project that if I miss a day, it only goes up a tiny bit. So I think I'm going to make um, Across the Pond Book 3 the priority for today. If I can't do any outlining, then that'll be fine. Yeah, I didn't do any writing. I just, I was not feeling well yesterday in the evening. After I had dinner, I just was feeling really, really exhausted. And just couldn't focus. So I got in bed at around 9.30 and I still stayed up for a little bit, but I just read and then went to bed and then I could not wake up this morning. I just <laughs> could not wake up. I'm at the tail end of my period and I think my fibro is just like done with it. And it's also the end of the semester and I'm exhausted from that and I'm burned out. So like, it's just a combination of factors. I just feel like it's a really delicate balance to keep me feeling okay. It's just so easy for me to not feel good. Just the slightest little change in how I'm feeling, what I'm doing, how much work I'm doing, the slightest little change just makes me feel awful. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now. So I'm just holding on. <laughs> I let myself sleep a little bit. I got up, I took a shower, blow dried my hair. Now I've got office hours going. I'm going to start grading because I've got more stuff that's been turned in. I've got a few emails to go over. Not a lot, but a few. I'm listening to the She Can, She Did podcast. Going to get back to listen to the podcast while I do my grading. She and um, her current guest, um, who is Amber, Amber C Cowburn. So I'm going to get back to letting them keep me company while I grade. I will check with you later. <laughs>
that's done. I can close that. I have three minutes until class starts, which means I probably have some students in the waiting room. It's just doing some stuff on a personal laptop, so I need to get work laptop back out. I'm logged in. Okay, good, that worked. I've just been doing a lot of work. I've had another cup of coffee. I've made a lot of progress. I've got, I'm caught up on grading. I've got a lot of work done. I need my lesson plan and my grade sheets, or attendance sheets, not the grade sheets, attendance sheets, and a pen. Um, so yeah, got all my grading done, got my emails done, got through all of the drafts that had been sent to me. Basically, I'm ready to teach now, so that's good. Yeah, what else can I tell you? <laughs> um, just had a lot of work to do, but it is now 2.59, so I need to get logged into class. My students are going to be like, where is she? I will talk to you later. <laughs> to go change into my cozy clothes <laughs> and just get a little bit more comfortable. I'm tired of being in this chair. I'm ready to go sit somewhere else. That is for sure. I have so much work to do still tonight. I'm not sure how much I'm going to get done though. I've only proofed one chapter of More Than Fate today. I had a little bit of time in between classes because um, they both got out early. So like I could I could do some book work right now. I don't know that I'm going to. <laughs> I'm so I'm so tired. You know, people keep asking like or saying, you know, they don't know how I, I do everything I do. And I, I don't. Not every day. There are days where I don't do anything. Like yesterday I didn't do any writing or any outlining. I just don't know that my brain can tolerate proofreading right now, but I still have so many more chapters to read. I might try to do just one more chapter today. I was supposed to do four. I don't think that's going to happen, but I really just want to go sit and do nothing. I really just, <laughs> I really just want a day where I can log off from work and not have anything else I have to do. <laughs> Most days. I can embrace that like part of trying to get any kind of side business or side thing going is you do then work nights and weekends. Most nights I can handle that. Most weekends I'm fine with doing a little bit of work, but every now and then there's a night or a weekend where I just don't want to do anything. And I kind of feel like tonight is one of those nights. I will do what I can, and if I don't get something done tonight, I don't get something done tonight, and that's fine. I don't really feel guilty about not doing any writing or any outlining yesterday, and you know, obviously I can't blow those projects off for the rest of April, but if there's a few days, there's like one or two days a week over the next few weeks where I don't work on them, it'll be okay. That's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> So, our Hugo question. Uh, I thought this was an interesting question. Do you have anything with no monetary value, but with so much sentimental value that you wouldn't sell it for $1,000? For $1,000, yeah. I've got stuff, though, with such sentimental value that even for a million dollars would be really pushing it. I think one of them, and it's something that I take with me, even like when I go travel on an overnight or a weekend away to my parents' house, like I don't leave it behind if I can help it, um, is I have this little mini 
afghan. I have a full size version, a uh, crocheted blanket, and then I have a mini version, and then I have a, a crocheted doll. And the all three were given to me by my grandmother, my grandma Max, who passed away when I was like four, four, five. I was really, really young. Like I don't really remember her very well. But she gave me all three of these items, the, the large blanket and the small blanket, which was for the doll. Um, and the doll was made by a friend of hers and given to me, but my grandma made the two blankets. And so I've got the full size afghan, which is bigger, and I keep it out here in the living room. It's the um, white, pink, and kind of raspberry red one that you might have seen in some of the previous vlogs. And then the little mini one I keep in my bedroom, and I, I take that with me because it's it's small, it's portable, um, but it's it's something of hers, something that she made with her own hands um, and since I didn't really get to know her it just means a lot and so it has zero monetary value like it's just some yarn <laughs> but I wouldn't sell it for anything I mean it for me it's that both of those blankets and that doll are heirloom pieces that I take very good care of that I still have I'm 40 years old, still have them. So I'd love to know, do you have anything with no monetary value, but with so much sentimental value that you wouldn't sell it for a thousand dollars or any other value? I find it hard to believe someone would say, I'll give you a million dollars for that old crocheted blanket. <laughs> if it was a million, I, th I feel like grandma would want me to pay off my student loans, but for like a thousand or 10,000, no. No, it's 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 worth far more than that to me. It's worth a million dollars as far as I'm concerned. So I'd love to know if you have any similar items. Let me know in the comments below. Say hi in the comments. Let me know how you're doing. I will see you all very soon in the next vlog. Thank you very much for watching this one. Bye.